Well, thank you and welcome back to day three of our World Creativity and Innovation Week event. Uh, right now, we're going to be joined by Patsy McCandless uh, for her presentation, A Roadmap Out of the Dark and Into the Light. A quick, quick introduction of Patsy. She was born on an island in Narragansett Bay, Rhode Island. Patsy McCandless is a woman of multifaceted talents. She is an award-winning author, artist, musician, TED speaker, educator, and author of the family classic novel, Becoming Jesse, celebrating the everyday magic of childhood. Patsy began writing when she took a workshop with the renowned Madeline Langle, a devoted wife, mother, grandmother, and teacher. Patsy was inspired to write this book to beguile parents and children to put down their cell phones, turn off their screens, open a book, and read together. So ladies and gentlemen, Patsy McCandless. Do you want to share your video, Patsy? Um, I'm not quite sure how to do that. I don't see... I <laughs> so down in the bottom left, there should be a little icon with a camera and it will say start video. There yeah. you are. There. Ah, very good. Okay. And we can hear you beautifully. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. First of all, I just want to thank you, Wendy, and again, thank our sponsors because I just can't get over this uh, forum for imagining the future. And I want to thank my favorite art place and Haggerty and Haggerty Digital. I think they've done a marvelous job putting this all together. So thank you very much. And I want to give a big hello to everyone who has joined us here. I am so honored and so excited to share this with you today, imagining the future. And what an opportunity to inspire and to uplift, which is exactly what I, the reason I wrote Becoming Jesse. Jesse is a little boy who was born an orphan, and he is surrounded by all kinds of people who teach him about his light, how to turn it on, how to keep it on, and how to shine it out everywhere. And that is exactly what Jesse and I want to do today. We want to illuminate a roadmap to your light. And we'll do it with uh, songs and stories uh, to share with you, to light you up too. Now, I would like to do this by telling three stories. And as Jesse would say, because he loves to play with words, he would use a spoonerism. A spoonerism means that you switch the beginning of two words. So he would say that this is something to hiss and leer, everybody. And that means, listen here. So let's begin your roadmap with the first story of you. Just imagine that you are a star roaming the universe and you come upon beautiful planet Earth and you see millions of lights shining out from every human being. And you say, I want to go there. So you choose to come to earth. And so begins the journey of your becoming. The beautiful star light ensconced in physical and in physical flesh and bones. And in that moment of your choosing, your mother's and father's chromosomes fuse together and you pop in one teeny tiny microscopic cell, a zygote clinging to the wall of the uterus. And science knows that you are the cell that creates like crazy, increasing exponentially all the cells. And by only six weeks, you become the embryo. And you have already created 
all your internal organs and your external organ. Plus, you created a support system just for you. You created your amniotic sac, your placenta, and your umbilical cord. And then by nine weeks, you're the fetus. And you begin creating the neural tubes that begin your fabulous brain. You are a powerful light-filled creator and you are creating yourself in every moment inside the womb. At three months, you weigh less than an ounce and yet you can curl your fingers and make little fists, wiggle your toes. You can sleep and swallow and breathe. And then you get started on creating your senses, especially hearing. Did you know you can actually not only hear your mom's voice, but you can distinguish your mother's voice from all others. And science again tells us that you just perk up when you hear her voice. You also get started on your taste buds and you let your mom know you really don't like the anchovies on her pizza, but you keep creating, you love creating, you love becoming. And so you keep going until your birth at six to eight pounds, maybe more. And by the way, you are also the one who gets the whole birthing journey started. You emit a hormone and an enzyme, and that is what gets the journey started out of the womb and into your physical human being, earthling status. And then you don't stop there. That insatiable curiosity, insatiable experimenting keeps you going. Now, just think about your development as an infant, as a toddler. You are so amazing because nobody tells you, okay, now it's time to reach out and touch your mother's cheek, or it's time now to latch on to your daddy's thumb. Oh, it's time now to roll over or sit up or stand up or take your first step. Nope, nobody tells you that. It's all you, you, glorious creator you. And you know, it wasn't all easy. You had to learn patience and perseverance because you had to try and try and try again. But you welcomed every puzzle. You welcomed every mystery in your world, like that mobile hanging above you that you love to bat at, or chasing Cheerios around your food tray. And when you learned to pincer one Cheerio <laughs> and get it into your mouth, Oh, you just reveled in your success. You celebrated that one Cheerio. You developed your body like a little Greek god, full of grace, full of strength, full of flexibility. And that brain of yours creating synapses galore so that your logical left brain and your imagining right brain come together and come up with your first step, your first word, your first question. It's all you. And you are the one who keeps it all going. And right now, in this very moment, it's still you. It's all still in there. And it's time for you to accept that you are a powerful, light-filled creator. It's kind of like the dark ages morphing into the renaissance of light. It's time for you to begin again, to reach out, to roll over and stand up and take your first step out of the dark 
and into the light, your light. My old storyteller in Becoming Jesse says it, that it's life, it's light, and it's in you, becoming moment by moment. You can't help it. It is who you truly are. So smile. You belong here. And trust your light to show you the way. This light is you. And it is so beautiful. It is your story. And I would like to sing one of the songs that I have often sung in my blog. When you shine your light so bright, how can you be anything but beautiful? Laughing eyes and smiling face, glitterings of grace. I'm telling you, becoming you, you're beautiful. So you are so beautiful with your light shining on. And that is the first story of you. The second story is about you and your choice. Because you choose dark or light. Now, about now, you're wondering, now, wait a minute, if, if I am filled with this light, then how do we have dark? And why do we live with dark? Well, the answer is in the very same reason that you found earth so alluring in the first place. You see here on earth, we have magnificent diversity. There is something of everything right here on earth, good or bad. Again, my old storyteller likes to explain it as the opposites, all leaning on each other. Good and bad teach each other. Difficult and easy support each other. Long and short define each other. High and low depend on each other. And like the sunrise and the sunset, light and dark begin each other. It's all energy, good and bad light and dark. It's all the opposites needing each other. One cannot exist without the other. For some time now, there has been plenty of dark energy going around, running rampant around our globe, and it is called fear. Indeed, the real virus is fear. Day after day, fear aimed right at you. With strident voices telling you how vulnerable you are and how susceptible you are. And stories focused on, ain't it awful, that are just flooding your eyes and your ears and seeping into your heart and your mind. And all the while, that beautiful light of yours is growing dimmer and dimmer because it is fear in action. Fear fostering powerless despair. Fear fostering useless depression. And worst of all, fear actually compromises your immune system. You see, I want to show you what your light really looks like. This is my light stick. I think up close you can see the little strands of lights, little holiday lights in there. And down there, there's a little battery. And there's even a noisemaker in here. 
But you'll notice there is no button. There is no switch to turn this on. There's only one way to turn on these lights, and that is with our human electric energy. Now, luminaries like Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, Carl Sagan, they have long told us that we are the stuff of stars. We are the same star elements. We are the same star power. And this is the power of our light. It is within us, pulsing through us in every heartbeat. So I'm gonna show you this light. I'm gonna turn it on with my light. So I hold this end and then I make the full human connection by holding the other end. This is you. This is your light. And we all have it. I have it. You have it. We are all born with this light. This is the starlight that is ensconced in our physical flesh and bones. So what fear does is this tamps down our beautiful light and it compromises our immune system because our immune cells work on the same electricity, the same kind of chugging along that our blood goes through our heart. The same electricity moves our immune cells. So if you're afraid, if you are frightened by what's going on in the world today, then your light is dampened, it's dimmed, and you are in the dark. And it feels terrible because fear has lots of offshoots like worry, anxiety, uh, dread, doubt, alarm, and panic. And sometimes it's pretty easy in this physical world to get into that panic place because the fear makes it feel like everything is fixed, fixed in place. And you just want to find a button to keep pushing to stop the world, but it only spins faster. And then you start to feel trapped. You feel like this is never going to change. You feel like we can't get out of it. There is no way out. But of course, there is always a way out. So let's turn the page and follow our way into your light. So these dark feelings, Jesse would give us a spoonerism that says they feel like a blushing crow, which means a crushing blow. But the dark feelings, the fear, all it really means is that you have separated from your light and you're lurching around in that dark, gloomy pessimism. But there is a grand thing about your light. And that is, you can turn it on anytime. And when you turn it on, you thrive. Now, I want you to think about this because you can thrive at any time, anywhere. And I think that this is a component that we need to take a really deep dive into. I'll explain with a few, um, just let me explain with this thought. Did you ever wonder why Mother Teresa never got leprosy? Or Florence Nightingale never contracted typhus or cholera? Even Princess Diana, who comforted so many AIDS patients up close and personal, she never got it. And then there is Dr. Albert Schweitzer and his wife, Helene, who for over 50 years worked in the disease ridden areas of Africa. And one of the most remarkable is a man named Dr. Jean-Jacques Muyembi, who first discovered 
the highly contagious and deadly Ebola. Well, he didn't know that it was highly contagious and deadly. And at first he was treating all his patients with no protective gear, not even gloves. So how can this be? How can it be that so many die around us and yet there are those who thrive? Whether it's a muddle or chaos, there are always those who are connected, who are clear and free of confusion without any fear. They don't live in fear. They live in their light. They are connected to their light. And so their immune system is in perfect running order. They are safeguarded by their beautiful, beautiful light. This light, I know you know what I'm talking about. I know you get it. You remember having that kind of detached feeling like floating. Lots of times you feel it when you're in the shower, in a nice, long, hot shower, or maybe sometimes when you're driving and you arrive home safe and sound, but you can't remember driving for the last five miles. Sometimes it's that tingling feeling in your heart, maybe in your stomach. It could be that little voice you hear inside your head. Sometimes, very often, it's when you look into the eyes of someone you love or hold their hand and it feels magical. It feels enchanting, loving and sublime. And that's because it is magic. It's your everyday magic. It is your light and it is real. Now, the best part is that this is the antidote to fear. Martha Graham, who was the famously creative and innovative dancer, she understood this. She wrote, there is a vitality, a life force, an energy, a quickening, and it is translated through you into action. And you must keep yourself and your channel open to it. And I say, let your light take the lead. My light has been in my creativity so many times in my life. When I am writing and I wonder, where did all these words come from? Or I'm working on my paper art, my paper solo, and I'm cutting my papers and arranging them, gluing them down. And I feel like I'm in this place where there is no time. It happens a lot in music too. I remember once I was playing my flute solo in a concert and my mind went totally blank, totally. I was utterly detached. I could tell my fingers were still moving, but it was as if somebody else was playing my flute and I was the channel for this beautiful music. People like to call this being in the flow, and that's exactly what it is. You are in the flow of your energy stream, your light. Even the tiniest thought can put you in there. The happiest thought can turn on your light. And the best part, the dark cannot hold a candle to this light. You see, the dark wants to say, stay inside, isolate, survive. <laughs> but the light tells you, go out and connect and thrive. 
No, 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 says the light. Just be quiet and do as you're told. But the light, it wants you to play and laugh and dance and sing and love. No, says the dark. No, this is your box. Stay in your box and just hang on. But the light says, there is no box, let go. And this is you choosing. You choosing where to look, to look at the light or look at the dark. This is you choosing what to let in, to let in the light or let in the dark. It is always your choice. The great thing about having your light on is that you know, you know consciously that you are making that choice. You choose in every thought, in every word, and in every action. So are you gonna choose the dark, noisy world? Or are you gonna choose the light that uncorks your soul in frothing champagne illuminations? This is your light. And your light is your life. Your light is your love. Your light is your laughter. Love, laughter, life, light. It's all the same energy, all the same. And you can change that energy anytime you want when you make a conscious decision to think a happier thought and boom, you're in the light. And it is so irresistible and it is contagious because you, your light, can ignite the light of other human beings. So yes, it is all about you choosing. It's not about you pushing a button. Remember my light stick? There is no button. So seek your light. It's always here and it's always waiting for you. I don't believe in la das in empty words and blah, blah, blahs. I don't believe in fripperies and telling lies is slippery. But I believe in love. I believe in magic. I believe in your light. And I believe in you. Now, I want you to believe in your love, in your magic, believe in your light. So we have taken a look at the story of you and we've taken a look at the story of your choices, good or bad, light or dark. And now we're going to take a look at how you can use your light because this is lovely, lovely, lovely talking about light. But I know you live in the physical world. And how do you live in all this crazy confusion and chaos? And you're right. If you do what you've always done, you get what you always got. The world doesn't change on a dime just for you. But here's another grand thing. You get to change anytime, anywhere. And in Becoming Jesse, he asked Deary that same question. How do we change? How do we find our way? And she tells him, There is, an ancient, there is an ancient practice in Japan called Kinski. There is this practice that tells us that our energy is real and it can be bad or good. Jesse is having a hard time 
with the polio pandemic in 1953, New York City. Plus that, it is a severe heat wave going through the city. And on top of that, Jesse is very concerned because his best friend's daddy is, has been lost at sea for about two weeks. So Jesse is brooding and he says, well, I guess there's nothing we can do. But his grandmother, Deary, she stops him. She says, why, Jesse, there's everything we can do. We can turn up our light and shine it all over. Remember the lesson, the ancient lessons of Japanese Kinski? Oh, yeah. They repair a broken bowl with the shining gold. They put it in all the cracks. Yes, and it becomes more beautiful than the original. This is the magic of how you come back to life. You break, you fill your cracks with illuminations, golden illuminations. You flow on, humming with the illuminations. Light on, Jesse. Light on. Illuminate. Change your energy. There is another ancient practice, the practice of feng shui, that studies the practice of energy. And it teaches that if you create bad energy, they call it sha, then you need to move out of that space. You need to get out of those bad feelings and sensations that are created there. So you, Jesse would call it pivoting from the dark to the light. Whatever you do, you need to take action. Go to the light, go to a window, go to a door, or better yet, go outside. But the most important thing you can do in a situation like that is to take action. Do you know why? Because action is the antidote. It's one of the great antidotes for bad energy. Action can be an antidote even for despair and depression. Now there's another thing to know about energy and that is to be very heedful of how you spend it. When I was young, my mom had a vegetable garden and I was out helping her water it. And she got this funny look on her face and she said, just remember, don't water the weeds. And I thought at the time I didn't get it, but I do now. Don't water the weeds. Don't give your beautiful energy to anything that is bad. Make it a habit to look for the positive. Right now, Mother Nature is cheering us all on with the seasons, with the changes in the seasons. Wherever you are on this globe, the seasons are changing. You can't cancel the seasons. So latch on to that and let go of anything bad. And remember, anything bad can be news, social media that is gloom and doom or whining or alarming gossip. Remember how powerful our words are. Jesse learned this lesson when he learned the light lesson that Deary taught him called the rule of tongue. I know that sounds funny, but the rule of tongue says, let all the words on your tongue taste delicious and let them pass through the remarkable gates. Are your words kind? Are your words true? Are your words necessary? A few years ago, my husband and I decided to take a conscious look at our words, and we decided that we wanted to get rid of the word should. Should. It is such a bossy, judgmental word. 
So we said, well, let's, let's do this instead. Let's, I would rather try that. And what happened was we felt freer. We felt lighter. We felt our life change. And even today, when we hear that word, our ears prick up like it just doesn't belong here, which is kind of a funny feeling. Now, remember to make a new habit. You can do it very easily, one little tiny thought at a time, like letting go of a word that doesn't serve you anymore. Remember, you chose to come here. So do what you came here to do. Shine on and open your gifts, your loving gifts. And here's one more. Always look for something new. This has a lot to do with your brain. Your brain shows up day in, day out, like the sun and its light energy. Same kind of energy. But it does get like the same old, same old, kind of a little tiresome. So when you present your brain with anything new, your brain gets positively smitten and it starts creating all over again and just zooming off in, in that direction of creation and innovation. It really is what we are here to do. I learned something new in a garden we visited recently, there was a sundial there and the words around the dials were from Robert Browning. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be. Well, I couldn't resist adding just one or changing just one word, new. So I say it, grow new along with me. The best is yet to be. Because new is where creativity and innovation are. It's your treasure hunt into the delights of finding the new path in your life. And that leads me to our third uh, to, to another question that I know you probably are asking, you know, again, this sounds great, but how do I find the new? It's especially in this confusing day after day life. Well, there is something else you need to know about your light. It does need to be regenerated in this physical world. You know, just like you have to regenerate the batteries, you have to plug them in. So how does your light get plugged in? It gets plugged in every time you go to sleep, especially when you go into your beautiful dream state. Now, when Jesse was asking the same question about the new, Deary told him, the new is in your dreams. When you believe in your dream, Jesse, your dream begins to belong to the universe and your soul knows its path. That's when your dream bubbles up like a firefly and comes looking for you. That's when you invite it in to your party. Your dream is like your guest. Treat it with love and fun let it know how precious it is, and it cannot resist you. Feel your dream like it is here, real, right now. Yes, find your dream. Find your dream in the fun and excitement of watching it bubble up because it will. <laughs> and you will find new at every turn, just greeting you with open arms. Another in inventor, Thomas Edison, who invented so many things, not just the light bulb, he understood 
this, this working of finding the new in sleep and in dreams. So he had this little uh, experiment that he would run on himself and it became part of his practice. He would ask his brain for a solution to one of his problems. And then he would go to sleep in his rocking chair. Now, he did have a little trick. He would put a coin in his hand and on the floor, he, underneath his hand, he would put a tin pie plate. So he would drift off to sleep and the coin would slip out of his hand into the pie plate, awakening and alerting him to the new, to whatever inspiration was there waiting for him. Kind of like a light bulb going off. This is the power of your light regenerated through sleep and your dream state. And your dreams, just like Thomas Edison, I think he had thousands of patents, but he also tried thousands of inventions that didn't work. So he came up against a brick wall. If your dream comes up against a brick wall, you don't have to smash into it. You don't have to pull it down. You don't even have to try to climb up it. All you have to do is trust your beautiful, powerful light to guide you around the wall. This is what your beautiful light is really here to do. It is here to guide you. Now, my final story in this is not my own story. It is actually a letter that our daughter wrote to inspire and uplift another human being. The very best thing I can advise you is to find things that make you happy. Even the smallest things that bring you joy can make a huge difference. I have experienced this more times than I can count in my life. When I have been in a bad, negative, frustrating situation, and there is something I really want, if I can let go of that physically intense feeling of wanting, which I know focuses on the lack or of not having, and I can focus instead on the lightness of just being happy right now. Amazingly, that thing I was wanting falls into place. I know how challenging it can be to get into that place of being happy, especially when you are sick and homebound. When I was 16, I got mono and it turned into chronic fatigue syndrome. I had to drop out of school and I was home alone by myself all the time. At first, it was so hard. But once I started doing, doing the little things that made me happy, finding a reason to get out of bed in the morning, it made all the difference. I was still sick for quite a long time, but about three years and my teenage years disappeared. But I know there are many people who had that same virus who actually never got better. So I know I am the one who healed myself. I brought health back into my life. There was no medication for the virus. So it was all up to me. And that is when I first started to learn that there is another part of me. My mom calls it my light. I learned how real it is, how wonderfully powerful it is, what a shining guide it is for my mind and my emotions. Especially when our world is upside down, the only things we truly control are our thoughts and our feelings. I choose happy, untroubled, buoyant, happy. It is my light. 
my mom's book, Becoming Jesse, also talks about a lot of these lessons. That's why she wrote it, to teach and inspire others. It isn't just a wonderful work of fiction. All the lessons that Jesse is taught are real. I know. These are my daughter's words, but I know how true they are, and I'll bet you do too. When this dark, challenging time is over, and it will be, what is the letter you want to write? What is the story you want to tell? Were you the powerless victim, or were you the successful victor? Did you merely survive or did you thrive? This isn't about la ti da happy words or slogans. No, this is about your capacity for growth. Think of your unstoppable growth as a little zygote, as the embryo, as the fetus, as the beautiful baby earthling, unstoppable growth. That is what you are. And all I want you to do is open that door just to crack. And when you see the light, know this is you. This is all you. And the light is already here in you. It is waiting for you. Every person on earth wants to feel this good. Every person on earth wants to celebrate. Even if it's just a cheerio, they want to celebrate and be celebrated. And you can do that with your light on. This isn't a trick. It's not snake oil. It's not a magic potion. This is your light, loving and lighting you and your world. So please dream it, find it, use it, live your light and give your light, love your light, becoming like Jesse, becoming more, always growing, always imagining, just like the love in Jesse's song. The greatest thing you'll ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. You be the light, be the love, the light and shine it all over. This is your future to imagine. And thank you for being with me. And thank you again to all the, to both of the sponsors Jerry Manal in My Favorite Art Place and the Haggerty's for Haggerty and Haggerty Digital. And I'm going to end with one of Jesse's little spoonerisms. He would say, eyeball everyone. And that is translated to mean by all everyone. Thank you so much for being here with me. Oh, and light on. Oh, Patsy, what a great, great, great presentation this was. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, you are clearly a storyteller uh, extraordinaire just in your tone and your, the way you speak. And I just, it, the whole story was so soothing and wonderful. Thank you. You said just the right thing because that's what I wanted really to do was to soothe all of us. Thank you. Well, absolutely. And I did want to say we had a couple of questions, a couple of comments, and then I had some as, as well um, about your presentation. I did want to say that Cherie in, um, in chat wrote down that she is fortunate enough to know Patsy and had the honor of reading her book early on. She is multi-talented, but most of all, a wonderful person. And I will say, Patsy, that your light clearly shines through and emanates all of those wonderful things that Cherie said about you. Thank you so much. And, and that's Sherry. Thank you so much. Sorry, Sherry. Sherry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs>
Thank so, you. Uh, and then there was another question that actually came in who uh, somebody asked who created our light? Well, you know, I um, tried to stick with my imagining and, and my presentation. I do know that when we get um, complicated with uh, beliefs, especially um, beliefs that are so um, close to our hearts, um, religious beliefs, um, that I don't want to tamp on anybody else's beliefs. So I use the word light and I use the word universe and source. Some other people would use the word God. What I believe is what I said before, it's all the same energy. It's all this fabulous creation. And I love being the creator here on this physical earth. I hope that answers the question. Well, I, the whole story was, again, I, I wrote down and took a little notes and, and I just wrote down that this was a, truly a story for all ages. And the thing that struck me um, for myself was I felt like I'd forgotten a lot about my own light. And I wanted to ask you how, so I know the, the story is geared towards kids or, you know, things like that. But I felt like it was such a great reminder and seeing, you talked about seeing the world through children's eyes. And I remember my children growing up and loving to watch their fascination. And I've forgotten a lot about that and the stress of the day and the time in this world that we're living in right now. How do you suggest, or how do you, uh, encourage people to find their light older people like myself yes well you know um i i do love children i taught children for 30 years and what i realize is that i really need to reach out to the parents and the grandparents because we are the models we are the champions for these children so i did write jesse to try to reach the children and the adults. And I did write it to try to inspire and ignite the light in whoever is reading it. And I hope, and I have heard from many of uh, an email uh, about my book, that that is what has happened. And people have been kind of uh, re-energized, reignited by reading Jesse. So I think that, I think that that is true. Right, right. So that's a great way then to kind of uh, remind yourself that there is that magic is still there for everybody. Yes. And, and it, I really believe it is real. It is our everyday magic and we can have it whenever we want. All we have to do is turn up our light. Right. And remember that it's there. Yes. Yes. Right. Well, Patsy, this was amazing. I did put all of your links over in the chat to uh, your book and your website and um, your information is there. Do you have anything else that you would like to share with us or let us know what's going on with you? Or are you doing any events coming up? Um, yes, I am actually uh, republishing Becoming Jesse um, with uh, illustrations and uh, book club discussion questions at the end and a guide for teachers so that they can use Becoming Jesse in the classroom if, if they would like to. And actually, you can see some of my illustrations if you look right over there. <laughs> Those are some of my silhouettes that I've been using that I'm going to have in my new edition. Plus that I have been very busy during this whole past year, and I wrote a sequel, a, a second book for Becoming Jesse called The Quest. I've had a lot of questions. Okay, now what happens? <laughs> so I've done that. And I also, uh, I have five grandchildren and we call them our baby grands because they are the music of our life. And I have written a lullaby for each one of those. And one of them said, Grams, why don't you make a lullaby book? So I've been working on illustrating my compositions uh, for the lullaby books too. So I've got a lot of irons in the fire, a lot of things in my pockets. So I'm very busy. 
You certainly do. Well, thank you so much for spending some time with us today and telling us the amazing story of Jesse and sharing that fabulous uh, idea and thought and reminder that we all have light within and that we can all tap into that and with that we really should because that's where you get your power. Yes. Boy, you say it perfectly. Thank you so much, Wendy. <laughs> I listened. It was a really great presentation and I loved it. So like I said, I thought, goodness gracious, I forgot about all this stuff for myself too. So thank oh, you very God. much. You've enlightened my day and I hope for others as well. Thank you so much. And once again, <laughs> light on. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Bye-bye. Well, thank you very much. For, for thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye there we go. Oh, that was an amazing presentation. Thank you again so much to Patsy McCandless for her beautiful story and her beautiful way that she tells her beautiful story. Oh my gosh, are her great baby grand so lucky. And the letter her daughter wrote, that was amazing. So clearly a quite talented family there. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I do want to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors, just like Patsy had done, Haggerty and Haggerty Digital Services and my favorite art place. Uh, we will be back here at uh, 2 30 for our next presentation um, so please join us then we have a great few more um, presentations today on day three of our world creativity and innovation week so thank you very much and we'll see you back here in about 30 minutes <laughs>